Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be evaluating a radical expression. We are given x times square root of x minus 11 times square root of x equals 10 and we're going to evaluate x minus square root of x numerically. I'll be presenting two methods. Let's start with the first method. Since we were given an expression, why don't we go ahead and solve for x and then substitute into the second one. So to make the solution a little easier, I want to factor out square root of x on the left hand side. Notice that it's a common factor. I'm not going to divide both sides by that. I don't want to get a rational equation. I just want to keep it as a polynomial. So let's go ahead and square both sides at this point. And this is a product, so the square of that is going to be the product of squares, which is x times x minus 11 quantity squared, and 10 times 10 equals 100, at least in base 10. Now let's go ahead and expand it. Uh, it's going to become x squared minus 22x plus 121. And now we were talking about, um, you know, we've done a cubic, uh, like on the 18th of December, and... This is just another cubic. And I, at the, at that time, I was saying, yeah, we'll do more cubics, and this is a cubic. Hopefully, that'll meet that <laughs> criteria. So anyways, let's distribute. I get x cubed minus 22x squared plus 121x equals 100. And I can go ahead and bring that over to the left and becomes a cubic. Great. How do you solve this cubic? Well, it's not symmetrical. It's not... Oh, very easy to solve. You can do guess and check, but here's what I would like you to notice. And it's kind of a little easier if you do separate it into this. Instead of writing it that way, why don't we put the terms, some of the terms on the right hand side, and I could have done that earlier, obviously, but anyways. Now here's what I'd like you to notice. If you add the coefficients on the left hand side, you're going to get 1 plus 121, which is 122. And if you add them on the right hand side, you get 22 plus 100, which is also 122. Wow, the sums are equal, which means when you bring them to the same side, there are going to be a difference and that's going to be zero. In other words, the sum of the coefficients of this polynomial is zero, which means x equals 1 is a solution. Uh, well, it's kind of guess and check, but it's kind of like a, you know, educated guess, right? Sort of. So you should always be looking out for these things. Um, can the sum of the coefficients be zero? Can the evens equal those odds so that x equals negative one is a possibility, right? But anyways, we got a solution and the rest is kind of easy to solve because we can do long division, short division, intermediate, whatever kind of division you want to do. Or you can just factor it, right? You can start off with x cubed and subtract x squared and then minus, you know, 21x squared to make it negative 22 and then you want to get basically you want to get x minus 1 as a factor that's the goal so in order to achieve that I do need to add 21x but that means that I have a leftover 100x and then that will be supplemented with 100 so everything is good everything is awesome right everything is awesome so now we can take out x squared times x minus 1 minus 21x times x minus 1 plus 100 times x minus 1. And this cubic is going to be now a linear times a quadratic, which is x minus 1 multiplied by x squared minus 21x plus 100. And that is equal to 0. Great. So from here, obviously, we already talked about it. x equals 1. We know that. That's a possible solution. Is that going to give us the answer? We'll talk about that. But let's go ahead and uh, solve the quadratic. If you use the quadratic formula, that would be fairly easy, I think, right? Uh, you're going to get two solutions, and they are going to be real. For reals, yes. They're both real because uh, 21 squared is greater than 4 times 100, so the discriminant thing, right? So anyways, they're going to be like 21 plus minus square root of 41 divided by 2. Great. So we get three solutions for the cubic. Great. That's fair. But uh, which one am I going to use? Whichever you like, right? Is that going to give you the same answer all the time? Uh-oh. 
Uh oh, that's not good because if you replace x with 1, you're going to get 0. Could the answer possibly be 0? Yeah, quite possible. But let's double check. Maybe triple check. Who knows? There are three roots, so we got to triple check. Yay. Okay, anyway. The original problem, I know I talk too much, that's a problem, but what can I do? I can't help, right? So, okay, you, we solved a radical equation and we found three solutions. We have to check them because some of them might be extraneous. Maybe all of them are going to be extraneous. Who knows, right? Maybe this equation has no solutions. So if you replace x with 1 in the original problem, 1 minus 11 does not equal 10. Uh, pretty close if you use absolute value, right? Uh, -uh This is not going to work. Uh, negative and positive stuff because we squared both sides, guys. Remember, that's what the problem is. So x equals 1 doesn't work. Extraneous. That's an interesting word. Extra. That's an extra root. Just to creep in. So... What about the other ones? Well, they're radical, so radical. How am I going to check this, right? Well, here's, you, here's one thing you can do. You can remember we factored out this, right? So you can kind of like find the square. Uh, I don't think so. But anyways, if you check, do the check, like if you substitute, right? Suppose you substitute 21 minus square root of this, you know, that, and then the what? How do you square root a radical? Um, there's a process that you can do, but I don't want to get into that. You can do it, or Wolfram Alpha can do it for you. But anyways, this is not going to equal 10, guys. Yeah, you could probably find out in some other way. So, but when you do this, when you do this, wait, did I say 10? Okay. Well, why is it 10, right? Okay, that's the trick. So here's the thing, when you substitute into the original problem, it's supposed to give you 10. But I didn't substitute into the original one, I substituted in the second expression. Why? Because I'm checking if it's going to work. But anyways, so here's the, here's the thing. Here's the thing. If you plug this into the original problem, uh, it is going to give you 10. And if you plug it into the given, um, the x minus root x, that is also going to give you 10, which means the answer is 10. So that's kind of interesting. Let's talk about the second method. Okay, great. We did too much about this. So second method. The second method is really cool. I think you're going to love it. Okay, let's see how that goes. So I have x root x minus 11 root x, right? And that is equal to 10. And I'm supposed to evaluate x minus root x. Here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to split up the 11 into... Uh, x root x minus 10 root x. Great. Okay. Why do I split it up? Because it's fun. And you'll see in a little bit. I can put these guys on the same side now with the 10. So let's go ahead and put the 10s together, right? 10s are going to be happy together. Now uh, factor out square root of x, and that's going to give you x minus x. Factor out 10, that's going to give you square root of x plus 1. Now x minus 1 can be factored into root x plus 1 and root x minus 1 using difference of two squares. That's kind of like pushing it, but hey, guess what? It works. Root x plus 1. If you're dealing with a real number, root x plus 1 is never going to be 0 because it's always positive. Bam, bam. It's gone. Now I have root x times that. Let's go ahead and distribute. Distribute probably. Don't you love it? When you distribute, guess you're going to get what? You're going to get the answer without knowing. And that's going to bring us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, keep up the good work, and bye-bye.